Luminar AI is being marketed by the company that creates it as being a completely new piece of software, which is technically correct. They've rebuilt it from the ground up. It's very fast, it's smooth, it's nice to use. I love it, I would buy it all day long and it retails at $99. So compared with the Lightroom Photoshop alternative, it's not even that expensive considering that costs you $120 per year, every year. Having said that, my interesting little observation of the day is that if you are a landscape photographer, in terms of functionality, there hasn't been a tremendous development when you compare Luminar AI with Luminar 4. So you can pick up Luminar 4 at the time of making this video. It retails at $67. Use our discount code in the link below. You can buy it for $57. So it's almost half the price of Luminar AI. And the only functional difference is that with Luminar AI, we have access to AI atmosphere, which gives us some great 3D effects for adding mist to our landscapes. But, you know, it's one effect. It is cool, and I'm not trying to downplay that because we've used it and I love it, but for $57, you can have pretty much all the functionality of Luminar AI, just without that mist effect. As for portraits, we do have some AI additions in there that are worth paying up for. The ability to manipulate the face, the skin, even the body with one click is just incredible. It's a stunning piece of software and a tremendous achievement. However, if you have just purchased Luminar 4, especially if your focus is landscaped, you don't really need to feel too bad about that. That's my point on this one. Let's look at a quick side-by-side -side in the computer here so you'll see what I mean about Luminar AI being an evolution of Luminar 4. Starting off with the Essentials tab of Luminar 4, we have Light AI, Enhanced AI Structure, all the way down to Vignette. Well, that's completely replicated there in Luminar AI's Essentials tab, as you can see. We have a new Composition AI tool in the Essentials tab, which is new in as much as it has some AI automation for choosing a composition, but if you're doing things manually, which to be honest with you is what I do, then this is the standard crop, rotate and resize options that you have in Luminar 4. Erase has been added to the Essentials panel, but this is again the same tool set that is available in the Canvas section of Luminar 4. Jumping across to the creative panel, things are fairly similar, but we do have a reordered list of tools within Luminar AI. Speaking about this Atmosphere AI, which is a great tool and I do enjoy it, we have something similar in Luminar 4, which is Fog. It's not as clever and it's not as complex, but it is a decent option. Texture overlay in Luminar 4 can now be found in the Local Adjustments Toolkit on Luminar AI. In Portrait Tools, the Skin AI is the same in both pieces of software. We're able to enhance and smooth out skin in addition to removing defects. Looking at Face AI, we do have some developments in the form of Iris AI, where we can instantly change the colour of the eyes. But apart from all of that, the other things are basically the same. The face light, the face slimming, the enlarge eyes, the red eye removal, dark circles removal, in addition to the modifications on the lips as well, they're the same between both pieces of software. One very impressive addition worth paying up for, however, is the body AI, where we can slim the body to really enhance an image. And as you can see here, we're not doing it on a young, gorgeous model on a beach. We're doing it on a fairly regular guy just to make it a slightly more flattering image. And I think it works and I think it's very useful. In the Pro tabs, both pieces of software are fairly similar. The optical adjustments in Luminar AI were previously available in the Canvas tab of Luminar 4. This is where we find the clone and stamp in Luminar AI, whereas previously that was also available in the canvas adjustments of Luminar 4. The local masking adjustments in Luminar AI are a great addition worth paying up for. Previously in Luminar 4 we had to make some layers which could get a bit cumbersome, whereas here if we want to make a temperature adjustment, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, AI structure, saturation or vibrance adjustment, we can do so by way of a paint mask, a radial brush or a gradient mask there on the image. It's quick and easy to do. It's a good addition. As for the templates in Luminar AI, I am a big fan. This is one of the flagship features for entry-level photo editors, is being able to manipulate an image at the click of a button. And we're not just talking about color adjustments, we're talking about AI adjustments, including sky replacement, sky enhancement, certain structural additions to the image, and so on and so forth. So they are good. But it's worth pointing out we had something very similar, if not identical, quite frankly, in Luminar 4, where we had Luminar Looks, and you could work through all manner of adjustments that did something very, very similar to your images. So I'd call this one a draw, to be honest with you, just a slightly different way of presenting the same capability. 
As for the ability to remove unwanted objects from your frame, both pieces of software have a really powerful clone and stamp tool in addition to an erase function that takes advantage of content aware fill technology which can be really really effective if you want a quick way of getting rid of something from your image. So in conclusion we have two fantastic pieces of software in the form of Luminar 4 and Luminar AI. If you're a landscape photographer I think you might want to dabble with Luminar 4 because you can pick that up for $57 if you use our discount code below. This is at the time of creating this video at least, maybe things will change, I don't know. If on the other hand your focus is more portraits then you might feel the need to purchase Luminar AI or upgrade from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI. Either way you're not going to go too far wrong. It's what you do with the software that counts of course and ultimately despite all of this AI stuff it's still very important for you to learn how to take good photographs in the first place. So enjoy it, whatever you do you're going to have fun and we will see you next time.